Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with a quick look at uh, Audacity 4. Uh, there's been some development going on in uh, the uh, pre-alpha Audacity 4. And uh, as you may know, this is uh, owned by Muse Group, as is a Muse Score Studio. And uh, we're going to look at it briefly, and I just want to talk about what I think are, are the big improvements to Audacity under the banner of Muse Group uh, and also in light of Muse Score Studio. Um, but first I want to show you where to get it if you want to try out the current alpha builds. This is nightly. Uh, there's a nightly updates, daily updates for the application. If you go to the GitHub page, github.com slash audacity slash audacity, this is the main Audacity page for the current version, which is a version, uh, uh, version 3. Uh, version 4 is the uh, rework, uh, the reworking of the program. Uh, the way you get to that is if you go to Actions, and then over on the left here, you'll see that you have, you can see some things are actually in progress right now on, on the builds. Uh, you have um, the Audacity builds for 3, but then down here you have AU4, and the cross-platform builds for that. I'm on Linux, so if I click on Linux for AU4 Build Linux, uh, it will take me to this page. And then what I want to do is rather than select a branch, uh, click on branch over here and click on Master, and it will give you the uh, most recent build. So this is the most recent build from yesterday. And if I click on that, uh, it brings me to this page where at the bottom I can find the artifact, uh, the uh, app image build. Uh, for yesterday's daily. Uh, and then from there I can install that on my system wherever I want. So this is how you get to the um, Audacity 4 builds. On the nightly pages for the for Audacity's website, you'll find that, particularly for Linux, there's no links to anything. For some reason they have eliminated the nightly links, but they do exist. You just have to go to the project page, to the GitHub page, and then you can find them. So it's better to go there than to go to Audacity's uh, actual website. Um, I'm going to show you what the benefits are, uh, particularly in relationship to MuseScore 4. First of all, aesthetically, it looks like MuseScore Studio. Um, you can see that the controls look similar, the layout looks similar, the aesthetics look similar, uh, the color scheme looks similar, and this is actually one of the biggest benefits that I want to point out is the presence of a color scheme for tracks. We no longer have just kind of a three or four color scheme with very badly <laughs> rendered color and poor contrast on the waveform. The waveforms are all black, and then the track colors uh, can be any uh, color within a gradient. It looks like they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a nine color um, kind of rainbow gradient. Uh, that you can pick, which is more than enough, I think, for, for most work. And I, I find this useful, probably the most useful thing, simply because now you can organize a project that has many sections, and you can look at the project and know what uh, a particular section is just based on color. So this is a very digital audio workstation sort of layout in terms of the ability to assign color to tracks. Of course, you can change the size of tracks. Um, there's no real good controls to do that universally as of right now. Um, there's no enveloping tools. There's a lot missing, actually. There's a ton of things missing right now as it's in pre-alpha. But uh, week by week, things will be coming into this month by month. I would say probably within a year's time, we'll see a beta release of this. I think they intended to call uh, a previous release an alpha release, it's, and, and then they kind of pulled back on that. It really wasn't ready. There was a lot of criticism about the lack of features uh, when that release went out. So it's, I think we're really still quite pre-alpha. But I would say within a year we'll have a, a, an actual beta release, if not a full release, of uh, Audacity 4. Um, now, as far as the layout, I think the color thing is a big deal, but one of the reasons why it's a big deal is because of another feature that already exists in Audacity 3, but is much more useful because of the 
organizational uh, potential with the color scheme. You can use effects. We have real-time effects. So if I click on a track and then I uh, uh, enable re real-time effects, you can see that I've applied some real-time effects. So what I've done is I went from my uh, MuseScore project, uh, I have an orchestral uh, mock-up here, and I exported uh, by sections or small group subsections. And the way you do this is you just select the instruments you want to uh, export, say we want to do the woodwinds, and I can solo uh, my woodwind group, and then I can export this. I just go to File, I go to Export, and then I select Main Score and Export as a Wave in whatever sample read I want to. I export that out, and then I have a waveform that I can then organize inside of an Audacity project. And from there, I can add external um, uh, effects, and I can tweak it. Theoretically, in the future, I'll be able to do more enveloping, which is something you can't really do inside of uh, MuseScore Studio, at least as of yet. I know that there's going to be some automation uh, coming in the future. I don't know what that will look like and what capability, capability it will have. I'm assuming that the automation will um, control the mixer in some way, which would give you some enveloping. Uh, but it gives me another environment from which I can mix uh, and tweak the sound of various sections and even individual instruments if I like to. I can change the pan. Now I can do some of that from here. In fact, I could export with audio effects from MuseScore Studio. Even in Linux, we now have uh, VST3 uh, plugins. You can add uh, you know, any kind of effect you want to and then export from there. What I did in this case is I exported everything completely dry. I disabled all of the reverb. I added no effects on here. And then I brought uh, everything into Audacity. And then what I did is for some of these, I mixed down. Uh, so I imported my trumpets, for example, and my bass trombones, and I EQ'd them to add a little bit more upper end. Now, I could have done this from MuseScore Studio, uh, but I brought it in here, tweaked it, and then I mixed that down to a single brass um, uh, grouping here. So it's some destructive editing. Now, as far as non-destructive editing, one thing that seems to be missing so far from Audacity, uh, including the new version, is we don't have the ability to create audio buses. So if you want to mix down to something, you're still, you still have to uh, bounce out or mix down. As of right now, we're not able to mix down. Uh, that capability has not yet been added to Audacity 4. It's, it's in 3, but not in 4. But that is a core capability that will be coming, I'm sure, very soon once they uh, fry a few bigger fish. Uh, but you can uh, record down to track, or you can just export a selected track. You can uh, solo tracks, export, and then uh, add them as a mix down, uh, just a couple of extra steps, and then add effects to that, solo that track. So you, you have to work a little bit differently in terms of the mixer uh, and in, in terms of dealing with buses. You don't have buses. You have to bounce down or mix down or render out an import uh, to kind of a, a kind of a hybrid of, of destructive editing uh, that can easily be undone because you're adding additional tracks, muting some, soloing others, and so forth. Uh, but anyway, I, I find this to be very promising. Uh, just to show you, you know, what can be done here, this is all dry. Uh, and then I've added effects. I've added some uh, reverb effects. You can see here live reverb effects individually to the tracks. And then under the master, I added an additional reverb and then an equalizer. Uh, to uh, uh, set the um, equalization the way I want to uh, for each one of these tracks. You can see each one has a different setting of reverb to put it into physical space. Let's see what this sounds like.
So, you know, it's a lot of flexibility, a lot of capability that you otherwise would use inside of a proper digital audio workstation, and it's all within the Muse family. So what I foresee is that, um, and I don't know if any developers will see this video, maybe someone will, I don't know, but what I foresee is uh, Audacity and MuseScore Studio uh, coming closer together, sharing features, and ideally we would be in a place where there is some kind of synchronization between the two. Um, and if possible, if there could be created some kind of a, uh, a video uh, sort of element that works either with either one, either a plugin, uh, which we have for uh, MuseScore Studio right now, uh, for VLC. Uh, an outside video player that is cross-platform like VLC or an onboard video system, which would give you kind of the capability to do very complex media scoring between the two applications. Um, of course, from there, you know, there's the subject of MIDI plugins and things like that. Something that Audacity has never really done fully, uh, but there is a little bit of a back end that's existed for decades now for Audacity. I think decades. I think that's how old the program is. Um, if not if not that, at least the past 10 years. Uh, but maybe something being done with that where you have the ability to use VSTIs inside of Audacity, which would you know, eliminate the need for any kind of rewire technology or jack implementation, which is something that you know I miss from MuseScore in the past. Um, having that kind of handshake between Audacity as a more proper you know, digital audio workstation environment, and it may be not exclusively and exactly like one, but certainly more like one, uh, but something that works hand in hand with uh, MuseScore Studio. That's what I envision in the future. Anyway, just a little bit of coverage on the look of this, some of the you know, what I think is kind of a big feature, just the organizational aspect of it and how it could be used uh, theoretically with uh, MuseScore Studio. So best of luck with this. Happy composing and happy mixing.